Welcome to Facts TV News, where everything is true. PNP calls on wholeness to withdraw offensive statements and give support to nurses. The opposition People's National Party, PNP, has called on Prime Minister Andrew Holness to immediately withdraw what it said was an offensive statement he made on preferential treatment of nurses, with the party suggesting that the move would help to end an ongoing sick call by nurses and return normality to the health sector. In a joint statement, opposition spokesmen Dr. Maurice Guy and Senator Lambert Brown, the Shadow Cabinet Minister for Health and Wellness and Public Service, respectfully said they express solidarity with the health workers who, in spite of their dedicated and selfless work, have been experiencing major frustration with regards to their benefits. Additionally, nurses are restive due to a recent inconclusive meeting with the Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Christopher Tufton, added the statement. The spokesman said the Prime Minister's withdrawal of the statement and a resumption of the meetings at the level of the Ministry of Health are basic to getting a return to normalcy. They said special consideration of groups of workers in the public sector was quite usual and nurses were due special treatment because of their role in the pandemic and the extraordinary responsibilities they carry in the overburdened hospital system. In addition, the shallow ministers argued that the condition of the service at hospitals has drastically fallen during the fight against COVID-19 with shortages of vital supplies including personal protective equipment, extra long hours and staff shortages. Guy and Senator Brown said they understood the nurses' plight. As a result, the Prime Minister should not pour salt in the open wound and disrespect their service in any way. He should withdraw, instruct a meeting to discuss their condition of service and provide urgent relief to their plight, Guy stated. Brown added that all categories of workers in the healthcare system have been highly frustrated, not only with poor conditions of service, but with what he said was the lack of effort by the government and the Ministry of Health and Wellness to provide equipment that is essential to the fight against the coronavirus and which is available to other healthcare professionals globally. They expressed deep concern for the availability of full service in the health system island-wide and said the situation must be resolved as soon as possible. They went on to add that most hospitals are already over capacity with a required 600 patients on COVID wards all over Jamaica. The Prime Minister must therefore act responsible to bring back normality to the public health care system, the statement concluded. Some experienced longer wait at Conwell Regional Hospital due to sick out of nurses yesterday. Some persons seeking treatment at the Conwell Regional Hospital in St. James yesterday had longer waiting time as nurses there joined their colleagues at other institutions in a sick out. Upset visitors also complained about a lack of information from hospital officials. My mother is here from Tuesday and she is still where we left her and it is frustrating because we have been waiting and cannot get any answers. I did not get to go inside the ward so I cannot say if nurses are there now, but when I came here on Tuesday, there were no nurses, the woman stated. About 50 of the 97 nurses scheduled for duties turned up for work yesterday morning. They are among the scores of public health nurses across Jamaica who stayed off the job yesterday to protest working conditions. The nurses were also upset over remarks made by the Prime Minister when he stated that no group, including healthcare workers, would receive priority treatment at hospital if they were to contract COVID-19. The comment, which was made by Holness last Thursday at the Jamaica House press conference, has angered nurses. When reporters visited Conwell Regional Hospital yesterday, only a few senior doctors, junior doctors and patient care assistants were seen carrying out duties. They shield away from speaking about the absenteeism by nurses. Attempts to get a comment from the hospital chief executive officer Charmaine Beckford Williams was unsuccessful as she was said to be in a meeting. WHO experts say urgent search for COVID origin stalled. The search for the origins of the COVID pandemic that has killed millions and crippled economies is at a standstill even as time is running out, scientists charged with the task by the UN warned on Wednesday. An initial report by the World Health Organization WHO team based on a general mission to China Ground zero of the global pandemic concluded that SARS-CoV-2 virus 
probably jumped from bat to human via an intermediate animal. A competing hypothesis that the virus leaked from a specialized lab was deemed extremely unlikely. But in a comment from the journal Nature, the scientist said that the mission was only intended as a first step in a process that has stalled. The search for the origin of SARS-CoV-2 is at a critical juncture, they wrote. The window of opportunity for conducting this crucial inquiry is closing fast. Tracing the biological trail back to the earliest pocket of the disease becomes more difficult as evidence disappear or become corrupted. The statement comes less than two weeks after the WHO, in a bid to revive the probe, urged China to hand over information on the earliest COVID-19 cases. They should include COVID data for 174 infections identified in December 2019 that China failed to share during the initial investigation, the WHO expert said. WHO investigators said it was agreed at the time that a second phase of research would fill in this gap. But China pushed back against the WHO request earlier this month, saying the January investigation should suffice and that calls for further data were motivated by politics, not science. Jim has especially bridled at the suggestion that the virus might have escaped from the lab. On Tuesday, U.S. intelligence agencies presented President Biden with a report looking at both the animal transmission and a lab leak hypothesis. The findings were described as inconclusive. In its comments, the WHO team notes that current data does not support the lab leak scenario. None of six priorities for further research alluded to this possibility. Rather, the scientists emphasize the need to trace the earliest case of COVID through disease reporting and antibody survey inside and outside of China. They also called for further investigation of wildlife forms and wild bats. As SARS-CoV-2 antibodies won, so collecting further samples and testing people who might have been exposed before December 2019 will yield diminishing returns, they stated. It added that many of the wildlife forms of interest for study have been closed and their livestock killed. Teen charged with murder after shooting incident. A 17-year-old has been slapped with several charges following the July murder of 40-year-old Winston Muir along East Road in the vicinity of 6th Street in Kingston. The police said the teen has been charged with murder, illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. Lawmen said that about 11.35 p.m. on July 13, citizens heard gunshot explosions and alerted the police. Upon their arrival, Mary's body was seen lying on the roadway in a pool of blood with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the head and upper body. The crime scene was processed and the body removed to the morgue for a post-mortem. The teen was arrested on Saturday, July 24, and officially charged Tuesday, August 24, after a question and answer interview. Blackness finally getting pipe water. Residents of Blackness Burn Savannah in Westmoreland are rejoicing as their wish for piped water is finally being granted. After months of pleas, discussions, and recommendations, the National Water Commission, NWC, began the process of laying pipes in the community on Saturday, August 21. The residents have over the years had to buy several feet of pipe to access water that is almost one mile away from their homes. Due to low water pressure, however, the commodity only comes to their pipes in the early mornings around 2 o'clock, thus residents still have to purchase water from water trucks to fill their tanks or drums. Councillor Kevin Murray, Jamaica Labour Party Friendship Division reported last weekend that he was informed that NWC would have completed the pipe lane on Sunday. The next step is for the residents to apply for their meters and connect to the main, which will now be right at their gate instead of all the way down the hill, he said. I am extremely grateful to the NWC responded to my plea of giving the people of blackness the opportunity to have access to the precious commodity, he continued. I must admit that I was extremely surprised when I received the confirmation that the pipelines were to be laid. I must definitely make special mention of Mr. Garfield McFarlane and Regional Director Jeffrey Simit, who both ensured that this dream became a reality. Dermot Horton, a long-time resident of the community, said, to see this pipeline materialize now, it's a great feeling. We don't have to carry water on our head again. We can live decent lives now and take shower and drink healthy water and live happily.
Some of us had to ban line from almost half a mile and run it through some bushes to reach all the way on the other side. When we turn on the pipe, his ear come inside of it because we have to take it from so far and it have to come up the hill. The pressure is low, like 2 or 3 in the morning is when we get some water in the pipes. Another resident, Delroy Graham, who has been living in the community since 1965, stated that he is ready to switch to the new line once it is available. I have my meter already, he stated. Now that I can see improvements are gone, I'm going to now take it from my gate to my yard and I feel proud that the councillor are feeling pretty good. Carol DaCosta, whose family operates a farm in the community, stated that she did not believe she would see this in her lifetime. For years we have been asking for water, she reported. When I called the NWC, they told me that this is not feasible because there is not enough persons for them to run a line. I felt dejected. I told them it is because there is no line why people not coming there to live. I emulated Mr. Murray tried, water is life. Docosta explained that she and her siblings took over their father's farm, a registered entity with the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, and rely heavily on rainwater to operate it. With rainwater only, her father grew cane and raised animals. She stated that during droughts, they purchased water at $3,000 per tank every three weeks. In the midst of celebration, Maury cautioned the resident that they must still put storage in place as the bullshot plan to feed the network, which is still not 100% reliable. For several years, residents have been affected by lack of water in the communities supplied by the Bullstroke water plant. Some councillors blame the lack of upgrade of the water plant, stating that it was initially created to supply water to 13,000 residents, which today would be the town of Greenchill only. With new housing developments over the years, the system now supplies residents in most of western and central West Maryland. However, NWC Smith has stated that the true challenge is caused by turbidity during the rainy season. Whenever there is a lot of rain, we get dirty water from the spring, he explained. We can't put the dirty water in the system, so we have to shut it down during these times. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.